today we're gonna make some homemade pastrami. I've had a lot of subscriber requests for this. You know who you are. So let's just jump right into this. We got a lot to do and let's look at what we're starting with. All right, so every good pastrami starts off with a big brisket. This is about 11 and a half pounds. And my butcher has done an excellent job trimming this thing up. You'll see here, there's some fat left. I'm leaving that on. I'm not gonna even worry about it. And then if we look at this side, he left me with a nice quarter inch trim, which is what you see a lot of these barbecue guys like to use. It's a little bit of fat here, but honestly, I'm not even gonna worry about it. So that's our brisket. All right, so what else do we have? I went out and got this pastrami kit. A good friend of mine recommended this. He said he uses it on venison. Like if he's gonna do a venison roast, he likes to corn them, but it's also good for brisket. But if you guys wanna know how to make your own, I'll let you know how to do that later in the video. So for now, we're gonna get this going. We just add water. So here's the brine mix. You're gonna do half a bag of this stuff mixed with two gallons of water to start. So I'm gonna pour in, I'm just eyeballing, about a half a bag. And then we're gonna add cold water um, two gallons. I'm going to start with one because my bowl is probably not going to fit a full two gallons. In fact, I know it's not. So we'll get this whole gallon in. And then you want to mix it really well. So we're going to get it all to dissolve in here. Now we're just going to dump it right in the container on top of my brisket. And then what I'm going to do if you look inside of here, there's the rest of that brine mix. I'm going to pour in my second gallon of water and mix that in. So we've got our brisket completely submerged in the brine solution. It took about two and a half gallons of water. And now all we have to do is add our pastrami pickling spices, which they give us in this little bag right here. And they say to use about a handful. So let's pour some in my hand and take a look at it and then we'll get it in there. Let's see what we got here. It's a good handful right there. So good amount of uh, pickling spices. I'm assuming that's a chili. But yeah, so we're gonna get this in, just drizzle this throughout. So that's it, let me get the lid on. And it says meat, not over three inches, will cure in three days. And I measured mine, mine's three and a half inches thick. So they say for each additional inch, it's gonna be another 24 hours. So in theory, this should be done in about four days. So I'm gonna put it in the fridge. We'll be back in four days and we're gonna throw it in the smoker. Wow, it's been five days. This thing's been brining in the refrigerator. We flipped it over once a day so that the top didn't dry out. And then I rinsed it off really good with water so that it's not too salty when it comes time to eat this. So take a look at how that brine changed the color. It kind of grayed it up a little bit, but you can really see all that silver skin now. You couldn't see it before. And it smells like a corned beef, pickly, spicy. And like I said before, I'm not touching any of this fat. I'm just gonna leave it. It's not that big of a deal to me. So first thing I'm gonna do is get down a layer of pepper. You know, pastrami's supposed to have a real nice peppery crust, so I'm gonna go kinda heavy with it. You can see here, I'm just gonna start by coating it using my hand. If you have a shaker, then use that, but this works fine. I'm gonna take what's left of my hand here and I'm just gonna rub these sides. Make sure we get that nice peppery crust. All right, so now for my mustard seed and coriander seed. I'm using a little mortar and pestle here. I'm gonna dump in, I'm just gonna eyeball it. About a tablespoon or so of the coriander, a tablespoon of the mustard seed. And if I need more, I can always crush up some more. And this is simple, guys. You just get in here after it, start to crush it up. So I don't know if you can see, but these are now like half seeds, right? So now I'm gonna sprinkle these over top of the pepper. And here we go, just, I'm eyeballing it. Just wanna cover the surface. It's really fragrant, it smells awesome. And same thing with our sides, I'm gonna rub it on here, pat it on, get that nice fat cap. And we'll finish it off with the garlic powder. Just a nice light dusting. And then I'm gonna flip this over and we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, so we got the pastrami seasoned up. The pellet smoker is heating up now. I set it to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. One other thing to point out is our outdoor temperature today, right now is about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. 
so it's a little bit on the cold side. And I'm gonna be using these Pit Boss whiskey barrel pellets combined with some leftover competition blend pellets that are in there now. So let me get my whiskey barrel pellets in and then I think we'll be ready to get in our pastrami. Okay, now let me show you my smoker setup. This smoker is 15 inches wide and my brisket is a little bit bigger than that. And so I'm using the old brick trick. You guys have seen me do that before. And what that's gonna do is just bend that brisket a little bit to help it fit. And after a couple hours when it shrinks up, you won't need the brick anymore. So if you got a small smoker like I do, there's a little tip for you. But let's get our pastrami in. We're gonna go fat side down. Our heat source is coming from the bottom. So that's why we're doing that. Let's get this open. And there's our fat cap. That'll go downside. All right, so that's how my brisket start out. It doesn't look pretty, but don't worry about it. It's gonna be just fine. All right, that's it. It's gonna stay in the smoker for about four or five hours. We just hit the two hour mark and I was able to take out the brick. Let me show you guys how this thing's looking. Okay, nice color. That sizzle noise that you might hear is actually my water pan running out of water. So I gotta fill that up pretty soon. Take a look at our rub, which has not set yet. So you can see some of that still coming off. Okay, good amount of moisture still left on the top. So there's no need for me to spritz this right now. We're just gonna push it back in. We'll probably let it go for another hour or two. And it's been a really interesting day to cook outside. We're dealing with 40 mile an hour wind gusts at times. Right now it's about 55 degrees, which is gonna be the high. And our pit boss has been holding pretty steady here between 280 and 260. So we're just gonna let it do its thing and we'll be back when it's time to wrap it up. We're just about to hit the five hour mark here on this smoked pastrami. Let's see how it looks. Look at that smoke rolling out of there. I mean, the color looks absolutely perfect. The bark has set. Okay, it's not coming off of my finger. Could I scrape it off? Yeah. But I don't think I wanna get any more smoke on this. I think we're ready to wrap it up. So let me get it over on the table real quick. All right, so hopefully get a little better look at this thing. I have not probed this yet. Um, I just kinda did this to color, but I'm sure you guys are curious. Let's see what the temperature is. I don't know, in this fattest part of it here. It's about 180 right there. So real quickly, I'm just gonna start to wrap this. All right, so it's gonna go back in the smoker. We're gonna keep it set to 275 degrees and it's probably gonna take another four or five hours for it to get as tender as we want. If you don't wanna burn up all the pellets, uh, you can take it inside, put it in the oven. It's the same exact thing but we're gonna come back when this is ready to cut up. Our pastrami's done. It actually cooked a lot faster than I thought. I'm not sure if that's because of the brining process, but it took eight hours. It was probe tender at about 212 degrees. And then I put it in a cooler and let it rest for an hour. Definitely go longer if you can, but I've only got about 20 minutes of daylight left. And besides that, I can't stand it anymore. I gotta cut into this thing, so let's see how it looks. It's got that really nice dark bark that I like. In fact, I don't think I've ever gotten one this dark before, so that's really good. Because I used foil, and during the resting process, my bark did steam. So some of it came loose, but most of it's intact. So the way this brisket kind of formed, it's a little weird. The grain is going this way. And so to cut it, I'm gonna turn it. And we'll just start going across the grain here. Oh man, that looks really good. So just for that end piece, look at the color. So it's that nice corned beef or pastrami color. You can see it just bending over the knife so we know it's tender. Let me cut a few more slices here. It's really good. Man, look, look at that bend on that. So let me move that to the side. I'm gonna cut off the point. 
and it's really hard to tell where exactly to cut this, but I'm no expert and kind of looks like it's right about here. So let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. Still piping hot. Okay, there's that fat layer, see everyone, where they squeeze the juice out. Look at that juice. I mean, that is crazy tender. So let me cut a few pieces off the point. And if you want to see if that's jiggly or not, look at that thing just move. So here we're going to go the opposite way. Oh man. Look at that guys. So good. Cutting these a little bit thicker. We'll just take one of these center pieces. Wow. Ooh, that's still too hot. Look at the juice. Now look at that just pull apart, guys. That is cooked perfectly. Just falling apart. Here's a piece of that flat that I just cut. Just comes right apart. Let me try a bite. So here's that flat. Mmm. Oh, wow. That cure has a unique flavor to it, unlike anything I've tried before. Almost a little sweet. And then, of course, you got that big bite of pepper, the coriander and mustard seed, a little bit of garlic powder. Mmm. So, hey, remember I said if you wanted to know how to make your own brine? Check out this video right there. You're going to love it.